Hello, beautiful. It's Susanna Kay again, and I'm just here live for our final Facebook Live for the Papers Challenge. I'm so glad that you're joining me. I'm just going to share this into all the groups and make sure that it's posting right. And then I'm a couple minutes early, so as soon as I've got all of this set up, then we will get started. Our final um, I know that there are several people who've mentioned um, either that they wanted to build their own life finder, which is awesome, or that uh, they wanted more information about what was in the life binder. So I just wanted to make sure to hop on and show you all what was in the life binder as well. Um, they wanted sorry. to build their own life. There we go. <laughs> sorry, just getting this set up. But I wanted to make sure to hop on and answer that question everybody as well as we had other questions come in that I wanted to make sure people were able to get their um, their questions answered so we had questions about kids artwork we had questions about greeting cards we had questions about just all sorts of stuff so let me this is kind of being a little funky but we'll get it um, so yeah so we had um, questions about old letters, and if I'll be doing any other challenges soon was a question. I'll make sure to get to all of those today and answer all those questions for you. If you've hopped on, I'm so glad that you're here. I see that there's a couple people. Uh, hi, Jana. I see Jana's here. Feel free, hop over to the comments, give me some thumbs up, some hearts, and let me know that you're here while I make sure that this link gets copied correctly. It's not wanting to go. Yeah. The link does not quite copyright. And I need to make sure that it goes through correctly because all the links that I share with you, at the last minute I have to update them in order for them to work. <laughs> and if they don't work, then, well, then you can't find the broadcast and then you miss out and then that makes me sad. So <laughs> let's avoid that. I think we've got it all set. Yeah, there we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the final live. It is now five o'clock exactly, so we will get started. Like I mentioned, if you don't already know me, I am Susanna Kay of Spark Organizing, and I run the challenges. I run the home organizing challenges. This month we're doing the papers challenge, organizing your papers and setting up an income and paper system. If you want to ever join all the challenges and make sure that you don't miss out, head over to uh, myhomechallenges.com Join our challenge now because all the challenges are in there. And if you're a member of the VOPs, then you get even more challenges. If you try it out, you find that you like it. So that's who I am. And this is our weekend after the papers challenge officially ended, actually. And I just wanted to make sure to hop in. Sorry, this way I can see the comments. I wanted to make sure to hop in and answer questions. And I had some people asking for more about what in the contents section of the Spark Life Finder. So that way, if you wanted to make your own binder, then awesome. I wanted to be able to share that table of contents with you, what my sections are, a little brief overview of what's in the sections, and that way you would be able to make your own binder if that's what you want. Although if you want the easy done for you method where it's just fill in the blank, the Spark Life Binder is available, but it's only available night so you cannot buy it after Sunday night I only offer it during special events uh, I had, had made that decision to just do special events so it will go away and even if you beg me you still can't buy it no offense I still love you so if you want it do get it before Sunday and you also get the ultimate papers workshop challenge okay let's just get started if you have any questions please 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 post them in the comments because this is probably the last time I'm live uh, for any form of question and answer, I might hop in live really fast tomorrow if I can, but it won't be for a big question or tips or anything like that. It might just be a, hey, check-in type of thing. We'll see if I even get the opportunity. I see Dottie's here. Hi, Dottie. Definitely. I'm so glad you said you appreciate this so much. You're welcome. Laura says, howdy. Karen says, hi. Anita says, hello. Welcome, welcome, everybody. All right. To get started, I had mentioned that 
we had some questions come in and I wanted to answer a couple of those questions really fast and then I want to tell you what's in the Spark Life Binder in case you wanted to make your own. So first off, first question, and I'll kind of mix them up. First question that I had, somebody asked me what to do with greeting cards that you've received. Um, a lot of times, most greeting cards, quite honestly, I throw them away unless there's something super special because you know I received the love that it was meant to give me. So I got the intention of the greeting card. I don't necessarily need the card itself to still love that person and appreciate that they thought of me. There are some cards sometimes, though, that are important enough that I do keep them. And this is how I do it. Um, I make a greeting card binder. I actually have three of these. Four. I lied. I have four of these. So I have one for my Christmas cards that I've absolutely loved over the years. I have one for my birthday cards that I've absolutely loved over the years. I have one from my wedding, from all the wedding cards, and then I have a general one that are just really important special cards for me um, that I want to keep. And all I do is I just take a hole punch and punch holes in the side of the card, and then use some binder clips. You can also use ribbon if you want to, or even you can bend paper clips. You can do however you want to, but I either do binder clips if I'm going to add to it often, or I use ribbon. For my really nice ones, I use ribbon. And then it makes this little like album of greeting cards, of the greeting cards that I've loved. You even have um, a note from my dad that he wrote one Christmas and put in a gift. So at Christmas time, I keep this in with my Christmas stuff. And at Christmas time, it comes out. And it's displayed with all of my other Christmas things. And then that way, I can add to it. And it's nice because it also it can stand up on its own on a shelf. <laughs> which is really handy. So it's not something that's j just laying around. I can also, my uh, stepdaughter Kayla has one for herself and we have it hanging on her wall. Hers has three so it can hang from the top, but it, the hook just hangs it and she can add it and she can go through it. She still likes to open up the ones, she's, she's young still, so she likes to open them up and hear the ones that play music and she likes to go through them. So that's what I do with greeting cards. Uh, old letters is somewhat similar. I do a binder. So a lot of times old letters, um, I have this whole binder. I've got a couple old letters just by sort of theme and from growing up. This was me and my bestie from birth, my best friend Sarah, and our nicknames. and. A bunch of the letters that she and I wrote back and forth and also that just friends of I, mine throughout high school wrote back and forth to each other so the cards that we sent to each other so all of these letters are precious to me and it was great because when I went up for her wedding years ago I was able to bring the Bible and that all our letters. and I look back and see you know she was so into new kids on the block and I thought my parents were horrible and did not understand me and all of that great stuff I can look back and see. So if you do have some old letters, it's really fun to be able to put them in a binder. If they're, you know, really old letters where it's more of an antique type of thing, make sure to use acid-free. I just have these in page protectors because this is just notebook paper from our school supply store because, I mean, we were like nine through... I think we stopped writing when we were about 17 or 18 years old. So that's a good decade almost of letters. But yes, if they are super fragile or uh, really important, then try acid free instead of just my usual page protectors. But my page protectors have worked for that for, well, over a decade as well. <laughs> I hope that that helps answer the question about old letters. I see. Andrea's watching. I see Anita. I don't remember if I said hi to you, Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi, Karen. Um, hi, Andrea. I see that you say hello. Hi, Beverly. It's great. I love seeing all of you on here with me. This is fantastic. Okay. I mentioned that if you wanted to build your own life binder, I was going to share a bit about the topics that are in the life binder and 
they are also listed on that Spark Life Binder sale page, the all about the Spark Life Binder. You can find the topics there, but I'll go a little bit more in depth for you. So if you are building your own, then this is going to at least give you an outline because I know not everybody can afford $99 to have it done for you. It's lovely when you can, and it's, trust me, totally worth it. It's underpriced, I'm told, all the time. When people buy it, they say that it should cost more, but I want to make it attainable, but I know that sometimes even $99 might not be attainable, so I'm here for you. Now, if you don't already know, the Spark Life Binder is where all the really important papers go. And all the really important, it's not necessarily the papers, but the really important information from those important papers and directions about where those papers are. So this right here is the Spark Life Binder. I sell it as a download. So you just download the PDF. It's already in order for you. It's already got like an FAQ. I think I've got... I think I have the first pages here to show you. So it comes with, if you wanted to use the cover, um, if you're not going to leave it out in public, it comes with a nice cover page for your binder, a binding that you can cut out and fit in your binding. Um, it comes with instructions. These are the first pages when you download it. Tips sheet, and then a how-to, step-by-step, this is what you need to do in order to get your binder assembled and to not get overwhelmed because it's not a project. It's not something that you need to download and fill out completely. It's a process. So you download it, you build it, and then as you come across papers, that's when you go ahead and you put them in your binder. You don't worry about it until you come across the papers, though, unless you can like super fast put your hands on it. I do say the emergency binder, if you're going to do anything ahead of time, then the emergency binder is a good one to do ahead of time, which is also right up in that outline. When you download and print out the pages, it's all in order for you, super easy. Um, the reason I do it as a download is also so I can keep it cheap for you, because I've looked into printing it, and I'm, I've not stopped looking into printing it, but I've looked into printing it. Oh, sorry. I've looked into printing it and selling it as a binder, and so far I cannot find an option that I feel is a reasonable price for that uh, that will still function the way that it needs to function. So, but I've not given up yet. All right, so when you get the download, within that is the table of contents, and I will tell you the sections that are in there. You can see if you want, ever want to pause your video and check all of that out. Um, Yvonne says, stop to say hi and thank you. Got to help get kids ready for homecoming. Oh, fantastic, Yvonne. And um, I'll answer Jana's question in just a minute. But the sections are basic information. So our basic information is simply our emergency instructions, which are the same as the ones in the emergency folder. So you can really just duplicate that into this section. But it's good to have it in both places because you don't want to grab your whole binder if there's an emergency. Contact information, so your contact information as well as contact information for people who are important to be able to contact in case of an emergency or notify of things. And then some items to include in a pocket folder or in pocket protectors or to at least enter the information about or the enter the location. Copies of all of your IDs, a copy of your voter ID card, veterans documentation such as a DD-214, a current photo of yourself, especially in the emergency binder, so that paramedics know who each section is applying to, uh, emergency contact, including a photo if possible, blood type card, if you have a card, at least list your blood type if not. Um, then also within, you see that it's all of the sections are laid out like this, and it's a fillable PDF, so you can type it in if you want to in your PDF, and I just put my little USB drive, I just have my fillable PDF on my USB drive, and I clip it to the ring. So it's nice and easy to be able to update it whenever I want, and I just go in and I type it in every once in a while when it gets really messy, but for the most part, I just handwrite it until I've got enough to need to actually go in and type it, but you can do either way. 
but you just fill things in. And this is how each section is. It asks you, like this one has, where are your letter of instructions, healthcare, surrogate forms, POA, DNR, other instructions or authorizations. And you'll list the name of the document, the location, and any notes about it. So that way people know if something were to happen to you and your relatives are handling your estate, or if you're incapacitated and you have a caregiver who needs to handle some of these things, then they know exactly where all of the important information is. So this is the basic information section. After you're, and oh, and what you do is if there's more than one person in your family that you're filling out a binder for, you can either make each person their own binder, but what I like to do is I just make another copy of the applicable section. So for the basic information, I do one copy per person and I just use, do I have them somewhere? I bet I do, yep. I just use these little, there we go, post-it flags. And they just peel off and they're just little flags I can hand write on them. And in between the dividers, I would stick a post-it flag with the person's name in front of their section. So you can have multiple flags for multiple people whenever you need more than one person in a section. And you just print off a second one or a third one, do one per person. Some of these sections are going to be shared. For the most part, the financial or real estate sections, you might not need duplicate copies, but the basic information is good to have one per person. So section two is medical. And in the medical section, we talk about healthcare providers and medical history. So you would also want a copy of your health insurance card, any information about any medical devices, special needs, uh, ports, implants, pacemakers, your medical provider's business cards. In the back, what I do is I add one of these business card holders, sheet protectors that hold business cards. So I can put all the doctor's business cards, just slide them in. Then I don't have to worry about um, entering all that information in by hand is a lot easier. And then copies of medical directives, including DNR, uh, printed on yellow paper, it says, in order for it to be official. If you're an organ donor, medical history paperwork, including immunization records, etc. So within this section, you're going to put, it's hard to do this with a band-aid on my thumb, <laughs> you're going to put all of your important information and if documents are not already in the back of that section, or sometimes I use a little pocket uh, with my dividers, if it's not already in the binder, then where that information is, where the original documents are for the ones that you would actually need to have people find. So that is the medical section. I see Beverly says, where do you put the emergency folders, the paramedic seat, if you're alone and unable to tell them? Let me get to that in just a minute. Once I get through all of these sections, then I will definitely address that. All right, so end of life, we have your funeral arrangements, basically. What are your preferences? You can create one of these per person as well, and it would just include anything and everything you want somebody to know about what your preferences are. So that way, when they're grieving and they're going through handling your estate and things like that, they don't have to try to figure out what you want. It's kind of a, they can go down the list and just do what you wanted with your funeral. Hopefully it gives them that easy button. And then I've, I've seen so many people where they've had somebody pass away and they're not sure, did they want to be cremated or buried? Did they want a religious ceremony? Is there a specific cemetery plot? If they don't know these things, then these are the things that will completely um, overwhelm them and they will probably never be sure if they made the right choice. And some people, this just eats away at them like forever. <laughs> so the more we can communicate this to the people we love, the more loving it is. And they never have to question it. They don't have to worry. They don't have to be scared that they're making the wrong choices. The family won't fight over what to do um, because it's all right there. This is what you want to done. So it takes half the fight out of it. There's always going to be somebody who's fighting in some families, but for the most part, there's not going to be any which way should it go. I think it should be this way because it's all right there. So this is a great way to tell them if you have any prepaid plans, what you prefer for hospice or elder care. Um, if you have a certain charity that you would like in lieu of flowers, then what charity that would be, that type of thing. 
Finance and insurance, this one's pretty self-explanatory, but it's very thick because it's, uh, well, there's a lot that goes into our finance and insurance. So within this section, we have all of our financial information, including our bank accounts, um, credit unions, if there's any automatic deposits or deductions that happen within those bank accounts, any credit card and charge accounts, loans, all of our loans, this asks for the account number, the address, the website, the policy numbers, bank account numbers, any special notes, anywhere that you might have more documentation. You tell them what file it would be in in the drawers. Um, do you have any certificates of deposit or treasury bills, money market, any type of financial information. And then all of your investments, including who your financial advisor and CPA are, um, mutual funds and stocks. Your, if you have an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, anything like that, if you are part of any partnerships, even if you have any membership type of clubs, some types of memberships are actually have a value to them or at least need to be canceled if they're a recurring charge. And your insurance policies that include your insurance agent's information. If you have life insurance, what the policy number is, um, what your what company it goes through, where the original documentation would be, if or you can just stick it in this binder itself if you wanted to. Disability insurance, automobile insurance, all the different insurances. And then each section also I added a page that's just blank for notes because it never fails that we just want to add a note to something. So that's the finance and insurance section. And you can print, reprint any papers that you want if you've got more than one person who has accounts that are separate. Real estate and personal property, again, not, there's not a whole lot, very different in here. It's just very thorough with so many different parts that you can fill out. So the pages in this section include real estate, personal property inventory, and I encourage you to also, on your USB drive, include a video walkthrough of your house. And then that way it's an inventory in case there is damage or theft you have an inventory with all the serial numbers on the video, and if you just do that once a year, then you're protected uh, for any kind of claims. It helps out a lot. Do you have any storage units, safe deposit boxes? Also, you can either put in this folder or tell the location of things like your deeds and land rights, mortgages, credit lines, the property map for your property, appraisals of any valuables. So if you have any valuable jewelry or artwork or antiques in the house, then you can list what they're appraised at, include the appraisal uh, paperwork if you'd like to, or what file drawer that's in. But also so that way, in the future, if you're not around to tell anybody, they know what's valuable in the house, and it's not, you aren't going through this whole estate, this whole home, and possibly letting go of something really valuable, not realizing that it is. Uh, storage unit contracts and keys. Um, oh yeah, and Linda had mentioned she gave me a good idea to also do spare keys for the house, or and I was thinking for spare keys for your car, spare keys for if you have a fireproof uh, safe, anything that you would need a key for. That either if you lose yours or if somebody was handling your estate, put all the keys. You can just throw them in the little pocket in the binder, and that way. They're all there, but I, I have storage unit contracts and keys for here. Yep, a uh, USB drive with a CD or USB drive with a video of your valuables and a home tour, and the safe deposit box agreement and keys if you have a safe deposit box. So this just walks you through. It also asks you about different items that you might have in your house, property purchase records, where are those located, homeowners association information, homeowners warranties, for the house, any warranties and important home information, your alarm system, any of that information, all of that's here. Maintenance services, you know, who are your providers and what are their contact information. Personal property would include, you know, the recordings of the items in your home. Also, if you have any automobile titles, where would those be? Anything of value in the house, and it, it reminds you, it has a section for fine jewelry and furs, China, silverware, crystal, and linens, antiques, other valuables. It has all of that. Storage unit, including what's in the unit. At least a brief summary of what's in the unit so that people know if something happens, what's even in there. Uh, because if you have something valuable in there, then they need to be able to 
get to that and make sure that it's safe. Safe deposit box, people who have the keys, what items are in your safe deposit box. It even has a quick referral uh, reference of some of the things that you might want to think about putting in your safe deposit box. What the bank address is and information, the box number, any special passwords for it, and then your notes section. All right, and then we're almost done. Uh, legal and official records. So in the legal and official records section, it's basically just all the legal stuff that you might need. So it would include who your attorney is, if you have an estate planner, a trustee, all of their contact info. The location of your original will, any copies of your will, the date of the most recent will, so that way they can tell if they're looking at the most recent one, and also the location of all of your vital papers. You could put it with your Spark Life Binder if you wanted to. There's definitely, if you get a big binder, room to just put copies in the back. But a lot of times I like to make sure that if this does not fit into a fireproof safe, I like to make sure that most of these things are in a safe deposit box or a fireproof safe just in case if something were to happen, then you don't lose the original copies. So this asks you what the original location is, what the location is for things like adoption papers, any military records, social security cards and marriage certificates, um, naturalization papers, passports, where your passport's at, if you have a living will, all of those types of things. So it's a nice long list, I won't read the whole thing to you. And then in section seven, um, I actually have to update date that. It's called, it's actually personal and family. The personal and family section would have information about your pets, about any memorabilia that's important in your home, any passwords that you have, and where things are located. So in the pocket folder, you'd probably want to put some photos of your pets, any business cards of service providers, copies of pet licenses and vaccinations, um, keys to any important storage locations, and a printout of your passwords. The most recent printout, especially if you use something like LastPass, you can just print it out every once in a while and throw that right in here. So for pets, you can just reprint one of these for each pet you have, and you can use a tab, or since it's only two pages, if you don't want to tab it, that's fine. But it includes, you know, their name, their breed, any ID numbers they have, if they're chipped, um, identifying markings. I always do keep a photo of them in the binder, so that way if something were to happen and they get lost, I have a really good photo for flyers or to post online to try to find them. Veterinarian, groomer, boarder, boarding company that they're used to that already knows them. Um, if they have any papers, pet registry, vaccination records, where all the, the location of all of their important paperwork, who would take them if you know, final arrangements, who would take them if you were no longer around. Then there's memorabilia. You just write down each of these prompts. It reminds you to write down things like where is their genealogy information? If you have any in the house, is there a folder or a book or something like that with the gene genealogy records? Where are the Im important photo albums? Any important cards or letters in the house? Any memorabilia, awards and honors, videotapes and home movies? Um, Anything basically that's super important that's mostly just memorabilia for the family. So it'd be a tragedy if it was lost. Passwords. This includes if you have a password management site, then, you know, what site do you use and what's the login? It also has common security questions and answers in case they have problems and need to reset your passwords or you have problems and need to reset your passwords. And it asks you for your main passwords, the most important ones for if something were to happen to you. But like I said, you can also create a list or um, print out your passwords and put them in here. And then where things are located. So you have any secret hiding places for some cash or something? Or is there special jewelry in your house? Are there spare keys somewhere in the house? Do you have a password book somewhere, um, an external hard drive? Like, I have an external hard drive. I want to make sure that people know that it's got all of our family photos on it. So if something were to happen to me, then that's the hard drive with all of the family photos and videos. Um, if you have, like, season tickets or anything, all of that, these are just all prompts of things to tell people where they are in the house. And then finally, resources and notes section. So this already includes how long to keep important documents. So it's a quick reference sheet. And then also, I 
send out a disaster preparedness checklist like this. So any sort of disaster at all, this pretty much covers it. It includes, you know, different types of disasters and the things that you should have for them. So if there was a, um, some type of an air filtration disaster, like something in the air, what you would do, nose and mouth protection, um, first aid kit, what should be in it, supply checklist, special needs, if you have a disability, what should you consider making sure that you have on hand? If you have a pet, what is, what's your plan with the pet? What do you need to take with you? Make sure that everything is there for your pet. If you have special needs items, if you have a baby, that type of thing, it gives you that checklist of what you need in a disaster for all of those things. And then like I mentioned, I use the business card holders in the back, and I also just put a pocket so that way, if I want to add anything really quickly, I throw it in this pocket, and it's all set. So, whew, that is this part of my finder. As you can see, there's a lot to it. <laughs> so, this has taken me over a decade to put together. And as you can imagine, it's helped a bunch of people in so many different ways. Like, my um, a former client of mine, Joanne, her family actually contacted me about a after she passed away to thank me because we set up a life binder for her and it made the process so much easier when she passed because she was able to write down especially you know, what her end of life requests were so they knew exactly what she wanted to have done um, when she passed if she wanted a funeral or what and then also they knew where the life insurance policies were all of the information where her bank accounts were what was important in the house um, all the memorabilia, the valuables, what to do with her dog, because she had the cutest little dog. Oh my goodness, it was adorable. And she'd already arranged with somebody to take the dog after she passed, so her family knew who that person was and could pass on also all the dog's records, who the dog was used to going to for grooming, all of that stuff. So they emailed me like with so many thank yous in that email because it was such a relief during such a hard time. So this, not only is it good for end of life, but the other part of this is the emergency binder that Beverly asked about. So the emergency binder, and feel free, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments, please, because I want to get through this um, so that anybody who does want to build their own is able to and can kind of get a structure. You won't get a, the easy quick fill, but at least you'll have a structure to do it yourself. I don't know how many people I've heard, though, say that they're so glad that uh, they went ahead and spent the money even though they weren't certain about it because they realized that they would wanted to do this for years and they'd never gotten around to it and the likelihood of them going through all this trouble to set it up and like create all these sections and figure out what they needed, they knew that they just would never even get around to it if it was all them <laughs> doing it on their own. So I've gotten a bunch of comments, especially once they've purchase the life binder and they say, oh my goodness, yes, now I will actually get it done versus having wanted to and thinking that I was going to be able to do it myself. So just that made me think of it. But the emergency binder that Beverly asked about, this is, I usually do a red plastic binder so that it's nice and safe and it does not wear out as much. And also because uh, Beverly asked where I keep it, I keep mine and I suggest other people keep theirs in the kitchen. So this way, if something spills on it, it won't get too damaged, and also use page protectors. The reason I keep it in the kitchen is because in most areas, at least in the United States, paramedics and emergency responders look in the kitchen, usually in or around the refrigerator. That's the one place that they've, there's um, just this consistency of, that's where you put at least some form of directives about where to find more information or an emergency. A lot of times uh, communities that I've lived in and have worked within, they have these little, they look like the old bank tubes, the pneumatic, I think it's called, not pneumatic, I don't know, the <laughs> bank tubes. And you put the most important medical and emergency information in this tube and you put it in your freezer. And it's got like these bright orange end caps or bright red end caps sometimes. And you put it in your freezer in an easy place to see. And then the paramedics will open up your freezer to look for this usually. If you're not able to speak to them, most of them know to just open up the freezer or look on the front of the freezer to see if there's emergency information. So this is why I keep mine in the kitchen and 
either on the front of the fridge in you know big red or orange or inside my freezer in a little container like that that's very obvious that it's for them but usually I do it on front of the fridge I write you know uh, paramedics or in case of emergency and then I write that the emergency binder is located at and then I tell them where it's at within the kitchen so they don't have to go searching for it somewhere else. Usually, I try to make it somewhere easy in the kitchen to find, such as emergency binder is located on top of the microwave or next to the refrigerator or on top of the refrigerator. Something that's going to be really easy, not, you know, third cabinet from the left, because <laughs> that might be in an emergency too hard for them to figure out third from where <laughs> and try to look for it. So let them know where it's at in a super easy to find spot. Maybe, you know, next to the blender on the counter. Super easy, and I put it in a red folder, so that way it's easy for them to eyeball, too. And I always label it. Um, this one just says demo, so I don't confuse it with my own. <laughs> so that right there is where I put the folder so the paramedics can find it and see it if I'm alone and unable to tell them. I hope that that answered your question, Beverly. Let me know if you have any other questions about that. Ooh, sorry, I have to sometimes reach up to get my comments to work. But let me know if you have any other questions about that. Super handy, I, um, I told before the story about Ron and his wife, and Ron had a heart attack and was not able to communicate, and Susan called the paramedics and the ambulance came, and of course she's in a panic and overwhelmed and her brain's not really thinking well. She grabbed her emergency binder though, she remembered at the last minute to grab her emergency binder and it saved his life because one of the common uh, processes or medications, there was something he was allergic to that they would not have known. And if she had not grabbed this that stated that he had that allergy, then they would have gone along with the normal course of things and he probably would have died. So the fact that, um, you know, make me cry. Oh, that one always tears me up. Um, the fact that he had the emergency binder and that his wife knew where to grab it and that she grabbed it saved his life, and it's so important. I just, uh, I love that one. So I see Linda, she's asking about organizing photos. Okay, I will get back to that in a couple minutes once I'm done with this, and then I promise to answer that. And I'll answer yours too, Jana, from earlier. So the emergency binder, what's in the emergency binder? It's short and sweet. I always put this one in page protectors just because I, you know, it's a little bit more active. But it has all of your emergency instructions, your current or changed prescription information, business cards for your doctors, a current photo for yourself, um, any emergency contacts you have, if you have any important medical or legal documents that would need to come with you or a copy of, such as power of attorney, DNR instructions. It has the reminder even, print DNR on yellow paper or it won't be accepted as official here in the States. A living will, authorization paperwork, medical directives, anything like that. Any emergency notes, including if there are pets in the home that will need care and who to contact for them. All of that information would go in your emergency binder. What I do in my emergency binder, um, this one, I got these little handy dandy dividers that have a pocket in them. I have not always had that. So a lot of times it's just a divider and I just tape the photo to the front of it. But each person has their own tab. This is my moose pie, my husband. And I put a photo of them so that way if the paramedics came and more than one person is not able to communicate, then they know who belongs to what information. And then also in the pocket, either behind the divider or somehow with their information, these prescription papers that you get when you pick up your prescription, it has all the information about the prescription with it. I just grab it. I already, I just crossed it out because I didn't want to be showing all my stuff on video. <laughs> but just take that when you start a new prescription and put it right in your medical binder, your emergency binder, and that way you have the uh, prescription that you're on, who prescribed it, the amount you're taking, the frequency that you're taking it, it has the manufacturer, it has any type of um, adverse effects, any type of conflicting medicines that you should avoid, all of that information is right here for the paramedics or your doctor or anybody who needs it. 
And then whenever you throw one in, you can just kind of eyeball and make sure that the ones that are in there are still accurate and current. But it's the easiest way. There you go. That's the easiest way is just toss that in as soon as you get it, and then all of the prescription information is right there. I don't know how many times I've brought this with me to a doctor's office, and they love when I can just pull those out and say, these are the prescriptions I'm on. Um, I get so many compliments about my emergency binder. Whenever I go in to see the doctor, they just think it's amazing, and they say that nobody's ever been so organized. <laughs> I feel like I get a gold star each time. But, yeah, so it has your name and address. It has any of your ID numbers. Now, if you're keeping this in a super uh, – what is it, a visible spot in your kitchen, it's okay to not write what like your social security number or driver's license is on here. You can just write who to call for it or where it would be uh, accessed in case they needed it. You can get away with not entering that if you're going to do like I do and put it on the microwave. But if you have any letter of instructions, the name of the document, the location, and any notes about it, so that way they know that it exists. If you're an organ donor and if there's any limitations on that, your blood type, uh, your local and your family emergency contacts, and then another one of these business card holders for all of your doctor's business cards. And like I said, I just do one per person, and then in the back, I keep a pocket for anything new that I just want to add. I also usually keep um, the latest vaccination records for my pets in here. So that way, if something happened, there's a hurricane coming and we had to grab the pets and go, then A, I could board them because I would have their vaccination records or I could take them to the shelter with me because they want to know that they're vaccinated. So I throw those in here too. And sometimes I put the photo in the back. Also, what's nice is if you do have to take this to the hospital with you, what I normally do is all that paperwork they give me at the hospital, I just tuck it in here to bring back home with me when I'm done. So that way I can bring it home and process it because some of the information might go in here, some might go in there before it hits my file drawer. So that's the emergency binder. Um, if you do nothing else, at least set up an emergency binder for yourself. It's just so helpful. Even I, like this, earlier this year, a few months ago, ended up having to go to the hospital and having my emergency binder, I just grabbed it, and that way my husband could handle all the paperwork, answering all the questions, and I could just focus on being my sick little self and getting better and not have to worry about that. And he did not have to ask me a million questions because it was all right there. So there you go. Um, I covered that. Oh, and also, one other thing. In your phone, if you don't already have a contact in your address book, called ICE, I-C-E, then you should add one. Linda reminded me to tell people about that. ICE is short for in case of emergency. And if you have a contact in your phone labeled ICE, then the responders know that's the person they should contact in case of an emergency. And I have several. I have ICE mom, ICE dad, ICE sister, ICE friend, ICE husband. Um, so in addition to if you have an iPhone or a phone where they have the emergency information that's easily clicked, in addition to that, having contacts labeled ICE in your phone or in your uh, in the contact, that's super helpful for emergency responders as well. All right. I think we got through the Spark Life Binder for those of you who were wondering what was in it and if you wanted to build it yourself or if seeing how intensive and everything it is, if you've decided that you don't want to build it yourself and it's worth the $99 to have it all put together for you, I totally get that. Just a reminder, the Spark Life Binder will not be sold after Sunday. So it goes away. You cannot buy it after Sunday. So if you want it, then as of right now, it's Saturday. Um, what is it about? 45? Yeah, 41 Saturday. And you have like a day, not even a day and a half. You have like a day and five, six hours to get the Spark Life Binder before you cannot get it again. So I will not be offering it for sale afterwards. Even if you beg me, I simply can't. So there we go. Um, also, there's the bonus, the Ultimate Papers Workshop bonus with the Spark Life Binder, which is super handy if you want to learn more about your file cabinets and how to set up your files really, really well. I'll tell you more about that later, though. All right, so we had a question.
from Jana. I told you I wouldn't forget. Jana asked, is there a good way to organize and store greeting cards that you have on hand to send so you can find them when you need them? You know what I do, Jana? I have, you know those cute little boxes? Do I have any around here? I don't have any right here, but at the craft store, they always have these super adorable boxes. Like and they're like a decoration than anything, and you can store things inside. I actually have all of my greeting cards, including some stamps, my return address labels, a pen. I have a little notebook with common phrases that I use all the time. Like I'm, whenever I have to send out a sympathy card, I can never think of the right words to say, so I wrote some down. So that way I have, you know, little inspirations of things to say to people in the cards. Um, I have everything that I might need for them in one of those boxes. And then I just kind of separate them by little, like big old pieces of paper by this is birthday cards and, you know, uh, what do I mostly have? I have thank you cards, birthday cards, and sympathy cards primarily because those are the ones that I send out the most at the last minute. <laughs> and then other cards are rare. So at my age, I'm not sending out a whole lot of birth, like, baby ones and wedding ones anymore. So I don't keep those on hand anymore. I just buy those as they come up. I might have one or two on hand just if I still had them, but that's about it. So that's what I do. I just keep it in a box with all of my supplies and that way I can pull them out. And I also in the box have a list of by month when people's birthdays are. So at the beginning of the month, I could just pull out the box. I look at the list for that month and it just has like a number and their name. <laughs> and that's like the day of their birthday and their name. So at the beginning of the month, I pull it out, I write all my birthday cards, and then where the stamp goes, I write the date of their birthday. So that way I can just put it near where my outgoing mail goes and see who, like, which one I need to send out next. So uh, several days before their birthday, then I'll pop it in the mail. And I just put a stamp on it and they can never see that the date is written underneath that stamp. But it gives me a reminder of when it go out. All right, so Linda says, do I have any sessions on organizing photos? This is my nemesis. I feel like since iCloud became available, sorry, I'm trying to open it up more, became available, I don't take time to make copies of my photos, and I want to have them for my kids. Any suggestions would be great. I realize this is a whole other topic. Not a problem. So Linda, last, uh, was it last night? No, I think it was this morning. This morning, I talked a bunch about what I do with my photos and how I organize my photos. I did a section on that within this morning's live. And also on LinkedIn Learning, I have an entire course on organizing digital photos. So it talks about what programs I use, how to get them from physical to scanned, best practices, all of that stuff. There's a whole course that takes you step by step with these short little videos that you can just watch the ones that you need. That's in LinkedIn Learning. If you go to LinkedIn Learning, I think it's just linkedinlearning.com, and search for Susanna K. Then you'll see all of my courses, and that's one of them, Organizing Digital Photos. And then also, uh, as far as copies of photos, a lot of times I will just make sure that they all get scanned, so I'll drop them off to a scanning service. I like to use ones that I can drop it off and not mail it, because I don't trust them with my photos so much. But dropping them off and just getting them at least scanned, even if you can't organize them into sections and name them all, at least just get them scanned, even if they're a hot mess on those CDs or the hard drive that they give you back, because then at least they're safe. So that's what I do for that. As far as digital photos, what programs I use, Google Photos is my go-to right now. I think that it's gotten better since I did my digital photos course. I'm pretty sure in the course I mentioned it as a you know really strong contender, and now it's, it's like my go-to. It's my only thing now. So... Uh, I guess I saw that one coming. <laughs> and Beverly said, thank you for answering about the emergency binder. Yes. And remember, Sunday at midnight, not only can you not buy the Spark Life binder again, the Ultimate Papers Workshop bonus also goes away. So you cannot get into the workshop any other way. But also the recap page, if you've not already seen the recap page, it has all the videos, including this morning's live video on the recap page. So it has all the videos from the challenge. And it has a downloadable PDF of all of the emails from the challenge. So before the end of the night on Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, before then, make sure you grab that PDF of the emails and watch any of the videos 
that you've not seen yet because that recap page goes away on Facebook all of the videos and all the daily tasks and everything comes out of the unit section uh, you'll be able to scroll through the feed to try to see where some of the videos are it just will be really hard to find them but I won't delete them it's just gonna be difficult to find videos and tasks in the free challenges network at myhomechallenges.com you'll have another week to be able to see the current uh, papers challenge tasks and videos and then it goes away there so they have it a bit longer because uh, that's where we're kind of moving over to is that challenge network and then finally if you're one of the VOPs if you have the VOP membership for like four five six dollars a month something like that depending on whether you sign up on the website or through your phone on the website's cheaper um, if you're one of those members then you get to keep the challenge tasks and videos all year and you get all the other challenges so, and there will be, Linda, there will be a photos challenge in the VOP membership eventually too. I'm thinking January, probably. That's my um, initial thought when we're all motivated to like make big organizing projects and stuff like that. So a fun photo organizing challenge in, but that's only for the VOPs. So if you're a member of that network, then you will get that. So I hope that that helps you. Linda says, yes, Google photos. I love Google photos especially syncs to your phone and then that way it sends it up and you can search for photos by the image you can just type you know dog and all of your photos that have a dog in it come up but then also you can tell it to free up space in your phone and anything that's actually been uploaded will it can delete it off your phone and it'll leave just the things that have not so I love it um, all right let's see what other questions do I have? Brad kind of agrees. Oh yes, I had the question about kids artwork and what I will do is I will post a link to what I do. I've got a video on YouTube. You can check out my whole channel, my whole YouTube channel. There's a bunch of different tips on absolutely anything and everything that I've thought about that, um, that I wanted to tell people about and well, not anything and everything. So many thoughts of that will be videos, but I have a ton of videos on all sorts of organizing and productivity topics, and I will post the one about kids' artwork for you here in the comments. But basically, one of my main things that I do is a, a gallery, and then I also use artwork as seasonal decorations. So I tell all about that in the YouTube video. And then, will I do another challenge soon? That was the other question. Um, yes, I will do another challenge. Uh, the next challenge is actually for the VOPs only. It's the continuation of the papers challenge. We're going to do tiny, tiny bite-sized tasks each day to get our important information and our papers finished, being sorted, and have fun with that. And that's next week, so that's only for the VOPs. As far as the free challenges, I'm not sure when the next free challenge is. Keep the challenges group. We'll have random stuff in there in the my challenges myhomechallenges.com group and we'll have some free challenges in that group that won't be on Facebook. So if you're not a member and you're not getting notifications from the free challenges group, remember that's where we'll have a couple more free things and then the VOPs get a challenge every single month. So if you want one challenge every month, some fun ones like decluttering. We have a 21 day declutter challenge that we do sometimes and we have, it's like a little scavenger hunt in your house to find different categories of things and we post the photos of our things and we have a spring cleaning that we just finished that video people still have in their vault in their membership so there's always some kind of fun challenge going on once a month minimum for the VOPs and then the occasional free one in the my home challenges group so I hope that answers your question about if there are more challenges coming up in the Facebook group I think it'll be a couple more months before there's another one in the Facebook group as far as I think I have planned right now. Um, so we will see how that goes. <laughs> All right, Dottie, college diplomas, out of frame and then where? There are a couple of options for that one. Um, one option is to just stick it in your Spark Life binder uh, behind the whichever page that you would look for it. Usually I do it with like the memorabilia with important papers or the contact information or the information about you. You can just put it in a page protector right behind there or in a pocket behind there if you'd like. I usually actually put mine in a fireproof safe along with things like the birth certificate, marriage certificate, 
um, any official documents that are the originals that I need. I just keep my certificate along with that. I take it out of the holder because usually they give you like a big paper holder or like in college they gave me this leather bound holder and I don't need the holder. I just need the paper. So I just took the paper out and put that in my fireproof safe with my things. You can put it in a safe deposit box. Wherever you keep your birth certificate is probably a good place in general. So I hope that that answered your question, Dottie. All right. Well, hopefully you found information live. I really enjoyed spending all of the time with you guys. You've been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's been so much fun. Let me make sure that I didn't forget anything. For keys. Yeah, I think I've got it. And I told you that I would let you know about the Ultimate Papers Workshop. So that is, if I can find my notes real quick. Okay, so Ultimate Papers Workshop, it's going to be live on October 3rd. You can only get it by purchasing the Spark Life Binder before Sunday, before the end of the day Sunday, if you're the first 50 people. If you're person number 51 to buy it, then you do not get the workshop because I only have 50 seats in the workshop. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's the limit of the software. So the first 50 people, and I think we're down to only 22 seats left last time I checked. Um, I need to go out and you know, enter. I've had several people buy the Spark Life Binder just while I was on this live. <laughs> so I need to see exactly how many seats are left and then go and update that after this live. But as of the beginning of this live, before those people, I'm pointing up because my, my phone has the notifications right above, before the latest purchases that have just recently happened, we had 22, so it's less than 22 now. But the Ultimate Papers workshop for the first 50 people who buy the Spark Life Finder will take you a um, bunch more in depth about how to set up your file system, your file cabinet for your personality type. So it includes like... A, download of exactly the file structure to create in your file cabinet. It includes what to shred and what to keep. It goes really in depth into what papers to keep, medical papers, uh, tax papers, things like that. Um, so the Ultimate Papers Workshop, it, um, if you can't attend live, it's okay. Whether you attend or not, you get the replay, that full recording of the entire Ultimate Papers Workshop. You get to keep it. So you will get the video and you can keep it, you can download it, watch it over and over if you want. Um, I know last time I did it, I've only done it one other time, Elaine said that she loved it. She'll watch it a few more times. So that way um, she is able to watch it over and over. And Rhonda said that she's loved it. She's glad she took the time to watch it live. She got several new ideas and she's made it uh, since to file accordingly to her personality type. She's an administrator. So I give you guys specific tips about your personality type. If you've taken the personality quiz, then um, if you haven't taken it, on the recap page, there's the links to everything. And I see Beverly just asked, how do we become VOP members? You can either, on the recap page, there's a link, or um, I think in the description here, so the description of this post, there's a link that says become a VOP for more paper challenge. Or you can also just go to myhomechallenges.com and choose the selection VOP membership when you sign up. And like I said, if you go through the computer instead of going through your phone, um, or at least go through like Safari or whatever, or Chrome on your phone, instead of through your app store to purchase it, it's cheaper because then we don't get the app store fees on top of it because they just add fees to whatever my cost is. And I don't have any control of those fees. <laughs> Cheaper if you do it on either your computer or go through the browser of your phone and don't let it take you to the app store. You can still download the app once you've become a member, just FYI. Um, all right, so as far as the Ultimate Papers Workshop, that'll take you step by step. If you want to become a VOP member, then go ahead and do that. That way you can get the extra challenge. You can keep this challenge. Um, we have Karen says, have you ever done a challenge for and pretty clothes and accessories and how to store them. Yes, I have, Karen. It's called my Rock Your Closet Challenge, and I will probably be doing that in the beginning of next year, I think. Um, that's one of the five days, a little bit more intensive free challenges that I do. The beginning of the year, I think around January, I'll probably do that one. I've not solidified that date yet, though. Uh, 
but yeah, so stick around. Keep your eyes on the myhomechallenges.com group, the challenge network, even if you're in the free one, or make sure that you are on my email list and um, you stay subscribed. And that way you can get all those announcements of these free challenges. I'll also announce it in the Facebook group, but we might not run it through Facebook. We'll see. It's to be determined. All right, I see. Um, yeah. And then finally, uh, one last thing. I got an email from Sharon a little while back. She says, thanks, Susanna. The minute I opened the PDF for the Life Finder, I knew I made the right decision. I'm one of those people who says, I'll do that on my own. But when I saw how organized and well thought out the information was, I gave myself a little pat on the back. Thank you. So I just wanted to share that. That was a super sweet email I got a while back. She was so excited. She emailed me several times as she was putting it together. Because like I say, print it out, put it in a binder, and then don't make a huge project of it. Just fill it in as you come across these important papers. And no stress. No stress at all. I hope that this has helped you out. If you have any other questions, please post them in the group. Post them in the comments. Um, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, yeah, this challenge has been so much fun with you. I've loved having you with the whole paper challenge and all that you've shared, all of your successes and your struggles and encouragement for each other. And it's just been so much fun chatting with you on these live videos. I have had a blast. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the weekend. I will be watching the groups all throughout the weekend. So if you have a question, please, please, please ask me your question. Also, if you want the Spark Life Binder, make sure to be one of those first 50 people. Like I said, there's like, there was 22 spots before I started this live. There's probably fewer now. Um, but if you can get that workshop, it's super, super helpful to kind of put the icing on the top and get that file cabinet completely set up for something that's going to work for you. So get that. But also on Sunday, at the end of the day on Sunday, you cannot buy the Life Binder anymore. Once Monday hits, I cannot sell the Life Binder. And it's not because I don't love you. Because I love you very, very much. But it's, it's just something that I've got to do because I want to take this step. I want everybody to have a Life Binder so that they can protect themselves and just send me all the wonderful stories about how it helped you out. I love getting those emails. I get those randomly all the time about how the Life Binder helped them out. So I want to be one of people. So make sure to get your Spark Life Binder uh, for you and for your family. Because, uh, it's just the most loving thing that you can do for yourself and for them. Oh, thank you so much. I love the love. I love you all so, so much. I will talk to you very soon and I'll see you over in the group. Keep being amazing and watch for the end of the weekend. I will be sending out all of your bonuses. If you bought the Spark Life Binder, you'll get your registrations and all of that good stuff. I love you so, so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.